What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Wolf Click, and I think you already knew that because you're here. Um, anyways, I'm back from the World Championships. I just got back yesterday evening, um, and I decided to post uh, the team that I that I used at the most recent World Championships where I went 5-1 day one, advancing to the second day, um, and then I went 5-2 and two in the Swiss rounds of the 2017 Pokemon World Championships day two. Uh, I advanced to top cut and I ended up playing against my good friend Avatar Fede for the round of like the top 16 qualifier match uh, and I ended up winning that match and then I lost to Nils Dunlop, I don't think I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, a player from Sweden who's had like a really incredible season uh, and is a recent Masters entrant, he was in Seniors last year and uh, in a close set I lost to him. So um, I guess just to give you guys some context, so last year when I posted the team report of the team that I used at the World Championships, I focused a lot on the calculations. Um, but this year, what ended up happening was, uh, like, going into the tournament, I thought, I had, like, a, a way of thinking about it, and I, I thought that um, it, w it was a mistake to use the same team from day one to day two, because I knew that, be like, being a high player, high profile player, if I were to do well day one, I could expect that people would scout me, and that I'd be kind of at a consistent information disadvantage, so um, when I was thinking about building for Worlds uh, for day two, or like for day, I like basically the idea is that I wanted two, two separate teams. I wanted to have a team for day one and a team for day two. Um, the idea came up for, with originally for day one was this is the first version I can find of it. This is um, the idea was speed swap for Mosa with Snorlax, um, with Scarf, Smeargle, with Fake Out, Spore, Transform, Map Block, and then these guys. I don't even know what they were. Yeah, just like, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was like, okay, let me maybe do Faramosa speed swap stuff day one and then. Um, I'll come up with something else for, for day two. Um, but as the tournament got closer and closer, I actually, I guess I just, I don't think I care if you guys see any of these teams. Um, we're about here, I think, yeah. So, like, I worked a bit on speed swap, and I ended up, like, you can see, like, I added, uh, Feeny, Arcanine, and Kartana, uh, with Smeargle, and then more Smeargle, and then eventually I dropped Smeargle, I tried Persian, I added Togedemaru, I tried Garchomp, um, and then, I don't even know, these are, like, OU teams, um, then, yeah, anyway, so while I was working on Speed Top, I was also working with Marcus for um, for trying to build, like, a core for, for a day two, um, and, like, we just couldn't get anything that worked. Like, every pretty much everything that we built, like, um, pretty much everything that we built was either weak to Gacked, uh, Garchomp, Arcanine, Celesteel, and Tapu Koko, and we tested it versus Snorlax and Ninetales, um, or it was weak to... Fake PG, which is the team that Yuri used to get top 16. So, like, we just couldn't find a way to to beat both of these things. We tried a lot, a lot of things. We tried Hariyama, Sel Valley, uh, Nihiligo Gyarados. We had like a cool Gyarados set. Um, yeah, but in the end, like, we couldn't come up with anything. So then it was like the Tuesday before Worlds. Um, and I, oh wait, so before I get there, okay, so this is like the final version of Speed Swap that I came up with. Uh, it's actually pretty close to identical to the team that I ended up using at Worlds. Uh, different spreads. But, like, uh, this is, I had, like, Wikiberry, Heal Pulse Feeny, and Assault Vest Arcanine with Bulldoze, uh, which is actually the original reason why Feeny was so fast, but in the end, like, I realized that, like, uh, Speed Swap Faramosa was, it was, like, really, it was, like, basically, like, when it worked, it worked really well, but it really struggled with, like, Haze and Roar, and I couldn't beat, uh, Fake PG at all, like, I had no tools versus it, because, um, with Protect on Snorlax, Gigalith and Kartana were just too difficult, so, um, so, yeah, Speed Swap wasn't working, and also, um, we couldn't build a team for day two. So a few days before Worlds, I was like, listen, I'm not gonna break this format. Like, there's, I can't build a team that solves the format like I did last year. So instead, I decided that I was just gonna try and improve the team that I originally had for day one, which was the Speed Swap team. Um, and yeah, and then I would just like focus on playing. So my goal going into the tournament was I was like, okay, I know I don't have the best team, but I feel like I have something that um, that gives me good options versus a lot of a lot of Pokemon, and uh, I was just gonna focus on playing. So, long story short, we couldn't build a team for day two. Like we like Marcus ended up building his team at 6 a.m. I ended up using the same team from day one. Um, but I felt confident with with this team. I felt like when I played well, I was really able to perform well with it. It felt like it gave me a lot of options. Um, I appreciated that it was pretty good against like gimmicky stuff. Like um, my Sun matchup was okay. My Rain matchup was okay. Not that those teams are like inherently gimmicks, but like those are things that like. Those are teams that, in general, I tend to prepare less for. I focus more on, this year, for example, I focus more on the more conventional matchups, like teams centered around, like, Coco Garchomp or, uh, you know, like, Fake PG, like, stuff that's more considered more traditional versus weather uh, reliant teams. So, I felt like I had good matchups, like, not good matchups across the board, but I didn't have too many matchups that I felt were, like, really, really difficult. Um, 
if you're wondering about the nicknames, I let my friend nickname most of them. Um, <laughs> so we got some, we have some unusual nicknames here. Um, yeah. Okay, so with all that out of the way, I guess I'll talk about the actual team now. So this is a team that I ended up using at World, I think. And I might have changed the spread here or there, but um, yeah, this, this is pretty close to the actual team that I ended up using. Uh, the original theory is that... I thought Mimikyu Snorlax was really, really strong, um, but I didn't like that most people were using it with like Mental Herb or, or anything. I thought the best set for Mimikyu was Ghost DMZ, um, because I thought Z Destiny Bond was really scary. Because basically, if they lead two Pokemon slower than Mimikyu, um, they can't. You can just Z Destiny Bond, and either like in the best case scenario, or it just it just forces them to be to like have to make a, a tough choice because if they're both slower than Mimikyu and they attack with both, either they don't get a KO or they do get a KO and they faint or. Um, they like use a status move or something and it's like it's pretty much a lose-lose for them so in a lot of situations Mimikyu Snorlax is really strong it lets uh, Z Destiny Bond to Trick Room is a strong combination and um, and yeah Belly Drum Snorlax is just really strong with support uh, but I didn't want to be too reliant on that and so kind of with testing with Speed Swap I found that I like Togedemaru, or, uh, yeah, Togedemaru Arcanine and Tepafini uh, I ended up switching to Choice Specs Tepafini over the original Bulk and Heal Pulse one because I don't really remember why I just was like I'll try this and then I liked it and I added Cartana because Gigalith was a real problem with this team, and I felt like it kind of, first of all, it completed the uh, Arcanine Fini Cartana core, which uh, has been like known to see success throughout the season, and also, it was just, it helped a lot with my matchup that I was struggling with, and it gave me a little bit more offense. Um, the team is kind of weak to Garchomp, for example, so having a Pokemon that can outspeed and use Bloom Doom on Garchomp is helpful. Um, of course, you do have the Snorlax option as well, but... Yeah, basically the way that I played this team primarily was it had two main modes. Um, I would either use Kartana, Fini, Arcanine, and Togedemaru, or I would use Snorlax, Mimikyu, Arcanine, and Fini. I didn't always do this depending on matchup, like versus matchups with, with um, like Trevenant, for example, I would end up switching things up sometimes versus like ghost types and some certain ghost types in general could be difficult, like Marowak and um, and Mimikyu as well. They, those are all Pokemon that can be difficult, so I would sometimes improvise, but for the most part I stuck with those two primary modes. Um, Yes. So I guess overall theory of the team, I've talked about the, 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 the Z Destiny Bond. Togedemaru is nice because Tepa Koko is a problem and being able to limit it is really nice. Uh, I, maybe a bulkier set would have been better on Togedemaru, but I never... The games that I lost, I didn't lose because Togedemaru wasn't bulky enough. Um, yeah. Anyway, so as you can see, I, I spent a lot of time on the EVs of this Togedemaru. Um, max speed and Jolly because it outspeeds all Tepa Lele and all... It speed ties with Mimikyu. It's 1.5 faster than all max speed Arcanine Jolly, so it's nice to like have Togedemaru that should be out speeding most Lele. Um, though you're not encoring them very often, Zingzap is a nice thing to do damage, and um, like sometimes you can encore the partner before you get KO'd, and it's, it's just nice to have a Pokemon that's one point faster than a lot of, like, like two of the main, or like two Pokemon that you can expect to see in a tournament. Um, I chose to use Focus Sash because I didn't think Assault Vest was very good here. Uh, the way I played Togedemaru, Focus Sash was really, really helpful. It was nice to have like like one hit of insurance, especially versus Pokemon like Arcanine and Garchomp, where um, you knew that you could take an attack so you could like stay in and zing zap or encore the partner and not go down a Pokemon. And if they wanted to, since Togedemaru is mainly support, like if they're attacking Togedemaru with Arcanine, for example, then they're not attacking um, your partner. So uh, Togedemaru pairs really well with Tepafini. Using Fig Out and Encore to support Specs Tepafini is pretty nice because if they protect, then you can encore them, and if they don't protect, then they take Fig Out plus whatever move Tepafini decides to use. Um, in the tournament itself, do I have my notes handy? Hang on. I don't know where I put my notebook. Oh, wait. Is it in here? Hang on, hang on, guys. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna look through stuff. Um, I don't know why I got this. Like, not, I can't, I can't see anything quickly in here. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yeah, Togunumaru was pretty helpful, and it's, it's also it can be used to support Snorlax. In the match, in the set that I lost to get knocked out of the tournament versus Nils, I actually brought Mimikyu Snorlax with um, Togunumaru in the back. In the game that I won, uh, I used Destiny Bond with Mimikyu turn one as he went foul play with Persian and Z play rough to KO my Mimikyu and I belly drummed. So the situation turn two was. Like, turn one, both our Mimikyu fainted, and I had plus six Norlax, and I sent in Togedemaru, which let me pressure his Persian with Fake Out, and since I knew he couldn't protect, I was uh, threatening Fake Out plus Frustration for a KO. So, um, that was that was something that I only did once, and I did end up losing the set, and I brought that the other two games, so I'm not sure if that's, like, ideal, but it was an option to bring, like, Snorlax plus um, Togedemaru. And sometimes sometimes I would leave one of these three on the bench, or, like, one, I guess one of these four, and bring Snorlax with the other, with the main mode, but, or with the Kartana Arcanine Fini mode, um, but not always. Yes. Okay. This is um, Aaron Trailer's Snorlax nickname. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I, like. I know why. It's a reference to 
I think the song I need a hero, but yeah. Um, the EVs, I think I, I was testing and I like failed to KO a Buzzwall, so I added more uh, attack. Um, I should, I think this is a good time. I, uh, I'd like to thank Trey Craft, um, to Wobblefett. He helped me a lot with, um, with testing this team and with like, uh, he helped a lot with spreads, like for the spreads that I didn't just like do 252, 252 for. Uh, he was a real help, so yeah, thank you to Trey. Thank you to Aaron Trailer as well, who was also a big help in testing this. Um, yeah. Okay, Snorlax, is it just like your standard, I guess? Snorlax set. The only difference is that I have Protect over High Horsepower because I think that with Mimikyu, Protect is better. Um, max Defense because Snorlax is kind of like, it's base 65 defense so that's relatively low even though he has pretty amazing HP. So with Belly Drum, you're getting to plus six, like that's your goal. Um, and because you're getting to plus six, like you don't need that much attack investment. Like I won't KO, like this doesn't KO like Porygon 2 for example, but it should get a lot of other things. Um, for example, it gets other Snorlax and it gets, um, it gets Buzzwole, unless they're like really like have a lot of HP, but I didn't expect to face that many high HP Buzzwole. I might get some other stuff as well. Um, yeah, Snorlax was like a real centerpiece of one of the modes of this team. Whereas, like with the other modes, uh, Kartana, Feeny, Arcanine, like it was more about like setting up for Feeny and Kartana so they could each like take a KO or like bring them in when they're, when they're healthy and just have them start steamrolling. But with Snorlax, it was like the main focus where your goal was to get Snorlax into position and KO stuff. Um, Recycle is really good, obviously, because it gives Snorlax more health. I personally, like, I'm not the best at, like, something that I think I can improve on is, like, knowing when to recycle versus when to frustration, because, like, if you're at plus six under Trick Room, like, you know they're likely to protect, and so if you recycle, you're in a good position, but, like, if you just attack, then, and they attack, and they don't protect, then they can protect the next turn, and you're wasting a turn, so, um, that was something I personally think I could do better on. I don't think it cost me anything major, but, yeah, that's, like, a, clearly a point of improvement. Um, I went with frustration over return because it's faster to get it down to zero happiness than it is to get it up to 255 happiness or whatever the maximum is because you can there's like you can just use bitter herbs and like give it like seven bitter herbs and then it's at zero happiness eight is eight eight uh eight bitter herbs to be safe um yeah uh i think it's pretty straightforward so i went with zero speed snorlax because i realized that like so there was like a kind of like a uh, snorlax race going on like i know smogan used max speed snorlax i think um but i decided to go minimum speed which is the, the kind of like the snorlax pattern was like people were like zero speed snorlax for a while and then they were like oh wait like we don't need zero speed, just they went like like zero speed, zero IV, negative nature. And then they're like, oh wait, we don't we don't need that. We can go like neutral nature, zero EVs, um, and 31 IVs. And so then, then they did that, and then they're like, yo, let's add a little bit of speed. So then people started adding like four EVs, 12 EVs, 20 EVs. Um, but I've gone back to zero speed IVs, zero speed EVs, and uh, negative nature because um, I was using Snorlax and Trick Room, and it was with Z Destiny Bond Mimikyu, when you bring Mimilax, it's not that hard to set up Trick Room. Or if it, it like, it basically, it's you can set up Trick Room like pseudo consistently, and so... Um, with that in mind, like, it was really helpful to underspeed, like, a Raquinid and Mudsdale, and, uh, to, uh, like, no, like, although it did end up costing me in my set against Nils, um, it, it definitely won me other sets to have slow, like, Snorlax that was slower, because when Trick Room goes up, you're just, like, way better, um, and you do it, like, you don't have to worry as much, like, if your Snorlax underspeeds everything on the field and it's at plus six, you're only taking one attack per turn, and you can kind of control which attack that is, because you're, you should be KOing the other Pokemon, unless it's, like, Celesteela, in which case it's not going to do that much, it's just going to leech to you, so... Um, yeah. Okay. Next up, we have Mimikyu the Mimikyu. Um, Maeve in my... So, I have, like, a subs uh, subscriber Discord for people who subscribe to me on Twitch. Um, and in there, like, we talk about, like, Pokemon, and we do team building stuff, and, uh, one of the people in there, Maeve, <laughs> she said, like, just out of the blue, like, without knowing, like, a while ago, like, two weeks, two and a half weeks ago or something, she was, like... She said that she had a dream that the world's play was a Mimikyu named Mimsy, and that she'd been known to have premonitions before. And I was like testing speed swap at the time, and I had Mimikyu, and I was like, hmm, maybe I named my Mimikyu Mimsy. So I did. Uh, this is Mimsy the Mimikyu. It's the only other nickname that I didn't let my friend nickname. Um, yes. As I mentioned before, I thought Ghost DMZ Destiny Bond was really strong. Um, Trick Room, obviously, for Snorlax. And then the last two moves are I don't think Taunt is that unusual, but I'll talk about it anyway. Um, something that I think this team did really well, I think I've mentioned this before, but uh, my options versus teams that were. Uh, actually, Taunt specifically was really helpful for a number of reasons, and one of those is like. Um, some teams are kind of gimmicky, and Taunt is just, like, really nice to, to help shut those down. For example, um, teams of Spore, Smeargle, or teams of Smeargle in general, I had Tapu Fini to stop status, and I also had Mimikyu with Taunt. Um, I used Taunt a couple times to stop opposing Mimikyu from setting up or from going for Trick Room. Um, and you can also use Mimikyu, so, like, there was one game, I forget where, who it was, but it was, like, I had, like, Snorlax and Mimikyu, and I went Protect with Snorlax and Taunt with Mimikyu because if they protect with their, I think it was a Mudsdale, if, maybe it was versus Eduardo, um, if they protect with, with Mudsdale, 
uh, then I can go for a 66% probable like Oko next turn with Frustration from Snorlax. And if they don't protect with Mudsdale, then they can't protect next turn because I've taunted them. So it's kind of like a win-win. I like to use it to pin things with Snorlax. It also came in handy in other situations. Um, something I didn't do at Worlds, but I do like to do, is you can go, like, let's say I have, like, low HP Mimikyu versus, like, or let's say I have Mimikyu versus Celesteela and I don't have Disguise, and, like, um, what you can do is you can taunt any Pokemon, and if you, like, if you expect to get KO'd the next turn, if you're, like, in range to get KO'd, you can go taunt and then Z Destiny Bond because they're forced to attack, so even if they attack their partner, you can redirect the attack and injure Mimikyu, and then, like, if you're low enough HP, then they'll faint because they have to attack, assuming, like, they can't switch or something, it's good in, like, when they only have one Pokemon left, or, so either, like, they faint... No, like, pretty much they always faint if you do it correctly. I didn't use it at Worlds, but I did use it in practice, and I thought it was really cool. Um, Z Destiny Bond is really cool in general. Like, it's good for Snorlax. You just have to be careful when using it, because if they're faster than you, then there's, like, really no point. Um, Destiny Bond plus Trick Room is also a pretty cool combination, um, because, like, if you Destiny Bond's effect lasts until your next move. So by Trick Room always going last, you basically can force a situation where if they were to KO your Mimikyu, like in order to stop Trick Room from going up, they have to KO your, your Mimikyu, but they, if they KO your Mimikyu, then you get a KO as well. So something that I like to do versus slower teams is go Z Destiny Bond with uh, Mimikyu and Belly Drum turn one, and then protect with Snorlax and Trick Room, because in order for them to get rid of, to prevent Trick Room from going up, they have to like, they have to KO Mimikyu, and if they like, if they do, then it becomes a three versus three, but I've got plus six Snorlax, so it's pretty nice. Um, The weird thing on the set, so there's a couple things. So first of all, Max Speed Mimikyu, but modest, because you're probably wondering, like, if I'm a Trick Room Pokemon, like, Trick Room Setter, why do I have Max Speed? Um, and the reason is because of Destiny Bond, like, you want to be outspeeding most stuff, so I just put the Max Speed on. Um, and the weird, the really weird thing is here is Shadow Ball. So, Mimikyu, as you might know, is really low base special attack, uh, base 100, base, uh, 50. So, for example, like, if you were just to go, like, neutral nature, like, or no, what's neutral nature? Uh, it's bashful. Bashful. So, like, ma so bashful Mimikyu is 110, like, like no investment um 110 attack stat so like with literally no investment and modest max special attack mimic you is 112 so you're only two points higher than your like like with 12 evs and no nature you'd be stronger in attack than you are with all of this investment in special attack so maybe that seems a little weird like why would you do that um and the reason was that i expected a lot of uh, metagross at worlds specifically salamence in metagross i thought that people were going to be using it and um just uh, because of Metagross is lower base special defense and the fact that it's like Shadow Ball isn't affected by Intimidate as you can see You have a pretty good chance to Oko Metagross I think I I used this twice on Metagross and I Okoed both of them so that was pretty nice Um, The other thing is that if you're catching people by surprise then like They might bulldoze themselves anyway So they'll just activate their own like so like or like to activate their own weakness policy because they don't expect um, Z Shadow Ball but the thing is that even if you even if they're like a little bulky um, and you didn't KO the Z Shadow Ball, then they would just KO themselves with Bulldoze. Though, again, both Metagross that I used this on just, just, uh, were fainted outright. So, um, the other thing is, that, like, the reason why I could justify using the Z Shadow Ball is that, first of all, you're not using it that much, and second of all, if you're ever intimidated, it, it's not the same as Shadow Claw, but it's, it's comparable, it's not, like, a huge loss. Um, it was kind of a pain versus Trevenant, which I played three of, surprisingly, because Trevenant is a problem for this team. Like, especially Trevenant plus things that threaten Arcanine, because it's kind of, like, the only answer to that. Um, because my Snorlax doesn't have a move to hit it, so the fact that, like, I Z Shadow Balled in top 19 against, uh, Avatar Fede and his Trevenant, and uh, I did, like, 80% of the time, I might not even have done 80%, and then he healed it all back up, um, yeah, so, like, obviously it's a lot weaker, but it is helpful versus Metagross, it also can Oko Kratana, surprisingly, I think. Yeah, it's like an easy KO versus Kratana, because Kratana is really low base special defense. That only came into play once, but it was versus Eduardo, and, um, it did, like, get me a spot in top cut, so, yeah, I think it was still solid. Um, at least make sure this is still recording. Okay, we're at 19 minutes, cool. Okay, um, so that's Mimikyu, Mimilax, yeah. Okay, sorry guys, when I record Showdown, my computer, uh, sometimes crashes, so it, like, froze a little bit, so I'm just going back to when I was talking about Cartana. So, um, anyway, yeah, this is Cartana. Uh, I actually have no idea what the EV spread does. I asked Trey, I was like, hey Trey, do you have a Cartana, a Gracium Sub-Z Cartana EV spread you could give me, and... Uh, he was like, yeah, 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 you can use this one. So, um, I don't know what the EVs do. I assume it's EV to live Life Orb Thunderbolt from Tapu Koko, which is, a, like, a good benchmark, but also not super necessary because, uh, I had Togedemar and Tapu Fini, so if I were to go back, I'd probably change the spread. Um, yes. I put sub over Smart Strike because I think it's way better. Like, I, I, I didn't like Cartana all season, but I started to test sub and Z at one point, and I actually thought it was, like, really strong because in front of Pokemon, like, Arcanine, you can just sub, like, substitute, and... 
Um, it, it, like, it really extends Cartano's longevity, and if you can get to get one prediction uh, and get a substitute up at like a good time, which I did versus Tobias uh, Koshitsky, who's a good friend of mine. I played him round three of Swiss Day 2. But basically in that game, like I got a substitute up when he like was playing defensive around Cartana, and because of that, I was able to kind of like ride my momentum because my Cartana wasn't in danger of being knocked out by like um, anything. So I was able to use it to constantly put damage on the opponent. So um, Cartana was a really good mon like in this tournament. Um, it's... Yeah, it's not, it's not a Pokemon that I expected to like very much, but it did a good job. Again, it outspeeds Garchomp, which is really nice. Um, I, le I just, I like, I used Bloom Doom really badly this tournament, I feel like. I feel like a couple times I just used it and it did nothing. Like, I switched into Celesteela or Arcanine. Um, but it's still nice to have that, that pressure. And I think having a second Z-move for them, because you're, oftentimes you're not bringing Mimikyu with this team. Um, I think having a secondary Z-move that can do a lot of damage is a good choice. Um, yeah. Cartana pairs with Tepu Fini because they, like, for example, um... Cartana, Q is really threatened by Arcanine, but Tepu Fini does really well versus Arcanine, and Tepu Fini can't really hit Tepu Fini on the other side for a lot of damage, but uh, Cartana can, and Arcanine also complements that very well. So, um, yeah, Cartana was a solid Pokemon. I, I would probably change the spread if I were to go back, um, but yeah, like, I, I have no complaints about it, and it paired well. Uh, I use Detective or Protect because of Imprison. Um, this is my Tepu Fini, so it's actually super, super, super fast. Um, <laughs> fun story. So, the day of Worlds, like the morning of Worlds Day 2, I was like, okay, it's really good that my Tepu Fini outspeeds other Tepu Fini, but I have a feeling people are going to, like, like, it, like if anyone watched my stream matches from day 1, they'll probably see that my Tepu Fini is, like, pretty fast. It outspeeds my Arcanine. So, maybe other people will start to speed creep. So, I was like, alright, I'm going to take a few points out of speed, I mean, out of HP, and I'm going to add them to, to uh, speed. And so, I'm sitting there, like, at the convention center, and I look in my bag, and I only have, like, one of the HP berries and one of the special attack berries. And I'm like, okay, I'll do that thing, because I don't have any more of these berries. Because <laughs> I don't I don't normally, like, re-Eevee stuff, because like, I normally just, like, Eevee it when I, <laughs> like, when I know what I want to use. And so I don't normally change my Eevee spreads. But this time I was like, okay, like, I'm going to change my spread. So, like, I start, I gave it, like, the uh, berry that reduces special attack, and I gave it the berry that reduces HP. And then I added, like, so, like, they reduced it by 10, so then I added two HP, Eevees to HP, and then I added two Eevees to special attack. And then I tried to add them to speed, and then I looked at my stats, and I could tell that, like, something was wrong. Because my Tapu Fini in-game is level 100, um, because of bottle caps. And so, I was like, oh my god, like, I can't, like, I don't know where I went wrong. And so then I just didn't save the game, and then I just used the same spread again. But I didn't want to. I wanted to go faster. Uh, I don't think it mattered, though, because I was speed creeping other Tepu Fini, and I never was outsped by... I might have been outsped by one Tepu Fini, actually. I think Basin 2 might have. Yeah, he definitely outsped my Tepu Fini. I think. He had a really fast Tepu Fini, but I don't think... He was probably, like, really, really fast. He might have even been max speed, because he was, um... He had Watarium Z Mud Muddy Water which didn't KO my Mimikyu. I was really proud of my Mimikyu because it probably, like, I thought he was going to die or be KO'd and then it wasn't. So, um, yeah, good job, Mimikyu, not being KO'd by Z Muddy Water. Anyway, yeah, so th that was the only time where I think more speed might have helped and, did, like, I don't think it would have mattered with a few points. I was going to put, like, two points faster. Um, the, actually, the, the reason I even picked this number is because it's one point faster than what you need to outspeed Persian after Bulldoze and on the original team I had... Um, Bulldoze Arcanine, but I really liked how fast my Tepu Fini was. So, I think uh, fast Tepu Fini is pretty good in general. Um, I don't remember, I asked Trey how much special attack I should have on Tepu Fini, and he said 116 or maybe 108 modest. Um, so, that's why I have this much. Uh, I don't know why. I think it KOs Garchomp, it, um, it doesn't KO Arcanine, but it does do a lot of damage and with some prior damage. Like, for example, Arcanine that switch into anything, like Bloom Doom, minus one Bloom Doom, um, are put into Muddy Water range. I chose Scald as the fourth move, um, because I thought about using Haze, and actually it might have come into play versus Nils, um, because he was using Belly Drum Snorlax. That actually would have helped a lot, but in general, Scald was way better because there were certain situations, like, versus, if you look at his team, if I, other than Mimikyu, okay, literally nothing to hit Marowak, literally nothing to hit Marowak, only Leaf Blade for Marowak, only Flare Blitz for Marowak, so, like, having this, Tepo Fini was, like, my only option for opposing Marowak, and so, having Scald was really good because if... Uh, I was able to play it down to the end game. Like I didn't want to be losing because Muddy Water missed Marowak, and I also used Scald versus Arcanine sometimes when I didn't when I didn't want to miss. Um, so Scald was just like a nice option to have, even though like in general Muddy Water is like higher reward, but it's also higher risk. So um, Dazzling Gleam was okay. Like it's a lot weaker than I expected. Um, I lost to set to Ken because Specs Dazzling Gleam dual uh, two targets plus single target Dazzling Gleam plus single target Dazzling Gleam didn't KO his Assault Vest type of Coco. Um, so maybe I wonder, like, maybe I should use a different move. But in, in general, Dazzling Gleam was okay. You just, like, you're not supposed to use it for damage. Um, oh my god, yeah. I also lost to Ken that game because ugh, I crit Dazzling Gleam on his Clefable and KO'd it when I was, like, I'd position myself to reset Trick Room and leave his Clefable with, like, 10% HP, and then I crit Dazzling Gleam and let me get a free switch in, and I was like, oh my god, how did this happen? Um, yeah, that was frustrating. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. Um, 
yeah Tobafini was solid it was it was um, uh, like a good offensive Pokemon and it pairs really well with Arcanine and Togemaru and it also benefits from Kartana and supports Kartana pretty well with its water attack so um the only problem with like Tapafini is like one of your main answers to Garchomp with this team, but the problem is that it has no recovery and can't protect, so um Garchomp could be a real problem for the Swords Dance or even if you like you just don't KO it. Uh yeah, Gar like as you can see there's not like not really a good there's actually no switch into te tectonic rage except for Snorlax, and if they have Swords Dance, like you could just like be in trouble. So you have to play really carefully around Garchomp. Um Last up, we have Arcanine, who has this is just standard Arcanine. I literally have no idea what these EVs do. This is like an EV spread from a team. I used a while ago and I just like I was in team builder and I hit like okay like copy and I hit paste and then I just used it so I would definitely change this Arcanine spread if I could go back I do know the attack is to KO so Flare Blitz and Extreme Speed KOs Tapu Koko most of the time um I don't know what the defense does I don't know what the special defense does and I think the speed is just like for some reason um I could I would definitely change the spread if I were to go back uh 50% fairy Arcanine is one of the best items for it maybe the best item for it uh because you really want Arcanine to be surviving for as long as possible and because of its intimidate ability which is really really helpful and uh having a berry that gives it 50 percent more health is, is really useful in doing that um i put helping hand as the filler because like obviously with only one tapu and it being tapu fini i was going to be in misty terrain a decent amount of the time especially with like discouraging opponent opponents from bringing tapu coco um so i thought about using like willow wisp or toxic and i thought about using bulldoze as well but the thing is like obviously willow wisp and toxic are blocked by misty terrain and bulldoze is like okay but like Mimic you can't protect, Tapu Fini can't protect, who's the main Pokemon that would benefit from it, and Snorlax doesn't really benefit from it, except like if you want to outspeed like a Raquinid. Though actually, <laughs> there was a game where, round two, I played against a Korean player who had um, a Raquinid. Round two, day one. Let's see. So, round two, day one, I played against, he had Mence, Metagross, Araquanid, Mudsdale, Coco, and Porygon 2. In game one, like I Oko his Metagross with the Z Shadow Ball and get my Belly Drum up, and then I like, um, I don't know how it happens, but at some point, like, Snorlax protects and he goes for Bulldoze, and Araquanid is on the field, and Araquanid, like, goes for Liquidation or something, and because he Bulldozed himself and lowered his Araquanid speed, then my uh, Snorlax outsped the Araquanid next turn and Okoed it with Frustration, which I thought was super funny. Um, yeah, anyways, that's that. So, that's pretty much it. Uh, this is standard Arcanine spread. Um, I, I didn't have, like, a really, like, a set plan when talking about this team, so I hope you, I hope that was informative for you. Um, I'm sorry if there were technical issues. I can't see when I'm recording what's going on. Um, yes, I think that should be it. I could, like, I could talk about the tournament and stuff, but this video is already kind of long, so I'll just wrap it up here. Um, I don't have, like, so I'm back at school. First of all, I don't have a lamp, so I'm sorry about the lighting. Um, I know it's not professional. Um, I will have a roommate this year because Virginia Tech took in too many students. They were like, okay, 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 like, maybe... You know, things were kind of crowded last year, so maybe we should take, like, mm, I don't know, like, 1,100 more students than we had last year. So, I do have a roommate, even though I'm an RA, so, um, I'm sure he's a super cool dude. I haven't met him yet. He should be moving in any day, but it's going to make recording more difficult. But, uh, as I said on Twitter, uh, I do intend to get more into content creation and to bring back, um, some stuff on my YouTube. So, I'll be playing some games with this team in the near future, and if you want to see it in action, and, yeah, I think that's it. So, if you, if you want to see more VGC content from me, feel free to subscribe, feel free to like this video, um... I'm looking forward to you, Sun, and you, Moon, and I'll probably be doing more guides for Pokemon when that comes out for VGC 18, and I think that's all I have to say for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and thank you for the support at Worlds. It meant a lot, and um, I'll see you guys next time.